Welcome back to part 2 of my PlayStation 4 bot tutorial. In this video, we'll be making a UI for our bot and implement a simple macro recording feature so we can record our controls and play it in a loop. In part 1, we cover the core functions of the method that we are using for the bot, which is by using the allow injection. If you're interested in how it works, then make sure to check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. The results we got from part 1 only prove that the bot can be done, but it doesn't really give us any practical uses unless you want to go AFK without using a rubber band. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to use your creativity to automate your grinding routines in any PS4 game. Start Visual Studio and create a new Windows Forms application project. We're going to call it PS4 Macro. Also, change the title and name of the form. We'll be using a library that I created called PS4 Remote Play Interceptor so that we don't have to rewrite any of our code from part 1. To install the package, open NuGet Package Manager console and type the following command. When asked to overwrite, type A and press enter. Now let's quickly test it out by copying the example code from GitHub to get back to where we were at the end of part 1. Copy the initialization code and put it in the forms constructor. Then copy the rest of the code and use the tooltip to include the library. Now we can run the program, and if everything is working correctly, then we can move on to the UI. Our UI will be based on a typical audio recording program with buttons for play, pause, stop and record. We'll be using these unicodes instead of icons. We also need to clear our reset button for clearing out the recorded macro, so create one for that too. Next, we're going to create a class that will handle the implementation of our macro playback and recording, and let's call it macro player. We have to make the class public and copy the method we use for testing to here because we will update the controls from within this class. Then create a public method for each button which is play, pause, stop, record, and clear. We also need a few properties that we can store the state of the macro. We'll need to know if the macro is playing, and we'll need to know if the macro is recording, so these two will be boolean properties. We need to store the current position of the playback, so add an int property called current tick.
and to store the data we recorded, add a property with a type list of DualShock state called sequence. And that's it for properties. Now we just need to create a constructor and initialize the values. In the constructor, set is playing and is recording to false. Set current text to zero and create a new list for sequence. Now we are ready to implement the methods that we created and left empty. For play, we want to set as playing to true. For pause, we set as playing to false. For stop, we set as playing to false just like pause, but we also want to reset current take to zero, so that when we press play the next time, it will start from the beginning. For record, we want to toggle the value of its recording. Finally, for clear, we will reset the sequence by creating a new list. We can now move on to the main part of the class which is manipulating the controls. First, we need to delete the example code and change the method to public instead of private static so that our UI can access it. We'll start by checking if the macro is playing. If it is, then we will increase current tick by 1. And if current tick exceeds the size of the sequence, we'll reset it to 0 to make it loop. Before that, we check if the macro is recording and we will add the current state to the sequence if it is. If it's not recording, then that means it is playing, so we want to replace the controls with what we recorded. Since the state variable is passed by reference, we can assign the item in the sequence directly to the variable. Also check if it is not null before assigning just to be safe. And that's it for this class. We can now go back to implement our UI. We need to call the methods from the macro player class that we just implemented, so go ahead and create a variable for it. Then in the constructor, create an instance of it. We also need to change the delegate to the one from macro player and remove the one we used for testing. Go back to the UI and double click on all the buttons to create an event. Then add the calls from macro player on each of the events. At this point, the macro should be working, but to be able to see the state of the program, we can highlight the buttons with some color. So create a method called update buttons to handle this. We need to change the color of the text, so we need to set the for color. 
If the macro is playing, we want to set the play button to green, otherwise set it to the default 4 color. We can copy this line and do the same for record by changing from is playing to is recording and change from the color green to red. The last thing we need to do is to call this method in all of the button events. Now we can finally run the bot and see some results. I'm going to be using GTA 5 as usual and to test the macro I'm going to record by entering a sheet to change the weather. I will click on record to enable recording and then press play to start recording. When I'm done I'll stop recording and press play. Keep an eye on the minimap to see when the sheet is activated. Changing the weather is just a simple example, but you can get creative with how you use the macro to make some kind of bot to any PS4 game. There's a few things that I wanted to cover on this part like saving a macro to a file so it can be loaded but it was a little out of scope for this tutorial. But I'll do that off camera and keep on making updates on github which you can find the link in the description. And that's it for this video. I hope you find this tutorial useful. If you do, please give this video a like and also subscribe for more tutorials like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.